Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Age of Wonders Planetfall. Uh, things are going alright here. Also, I remembered the name of the game on the first try, so that, that's a good omen. I'm going I'm to say that bodes well for today. Uh, we have some more, like, random neutrals to kill, some more loot items to grab, but really what we got to do is figure out how exactly we're going to get across this water. Did we bother to research the, um, the thing that lets you use transports? Yeah, okay, we totally did. Well, then I guess that's how we're going to do it. We're going to just get in the water, and hopefully that's going to work fine, and we're not going to get attacked by any sea-dwelling neutral monsters. I don't know if transport ships are able to attack at all. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. It may be the case that it's unwise to have troops get in the water without real uh, naval escort. Some games are balanced that way. All right, let's see. What do we want to... Where do we want to put this down? We should definitely continue to get vision. I don't actually know where uh, our other objectives are. I suppose let's just like look around over here. Just get even more map vision. We have we have hostile forces over here. This is all this one army. I'm talking about Secto or Zarai here. We have to kill one of them to end the mission. And I don't think we actually know where they are, right? Is there any... Like, zoom to me on the map button. No. Uh, what about somebody where we do know where they are? If I click on the growth. Okay, well, if I click on the growth, it just zooms me straight to them, because they're whole... They're not actually a, uh, a player faction, so their whole interaction interface is different. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to, <laughs> how to figure out where Secto and Zarai are. I guess we'll just keep looking around, right? We have some ops ready to, or ready to prime... We know a couple of tactical things. Do we have a second Doctrine slot yet? We do, we do. So we should probably actually run one of these. Uh, more influence from quests doesn't seem too, uh, terribly useful. Honestly, a lot of these don't, don't seem important. I guess the Economist is just free resources. And none of it is, none of it is really stuff we care about very much. So we just sail across, and I mean, we're only, we're looking at a pretty small force over here, although we don't know too much about their colonial, or their colony militia power is listed as 340, but we don't know too much about the makeup of those troops. And maybe it's a bad idea to run literally every military unit we own uh, over to this other landmass. I should probably build a little bit of a, a backup military, but I think we're going to try this. We're, we're going to go get in the water. Our army has embarked. It's basically just... The same as it was on land, except on the back of a giant crab monster thing. And it looks like there's no indication that, um... There's no indication that our combat strength is diminished. Maybe if we get attacked by a sea monster... I don't know. I don't know what'll happen. I guess maybe we'll find out. Uh, we don't really care about the native threat locator. It really doesn't seem like we have to be too stressed about enemy spawners. At the moment, at least. Yeah, I'm curious what happens when we uh, when we bust open the syndicate syndicate prisons when we affect our jailbreak over here. Like, is this going to uh, is this going to become a bunch of troops who join us, or are we going to be able to actually take the place over? Because right now it looks like a city. We haven't seen at all how military interaction with other players' cities works. Okay, we finished our aquatic developments. So we can now improve coastal sectors, and at this point, I have no idea. <laughs> what to research next. Actually, how are my cities doing on happiness? Are we, like, pretty cool? Eight and... Ten. There's actually, there's probably a menu here somewhere. Yeah, colony overview. Yep, this is exactly what I was looking for. Okay, so we're not terribly desperate for happiness right now. Our power generation is absurd, like, completely through the roof. I don't really know what we need to do. I guess, I guess like I said, just, like, build more units. That's a good way of making use of all of this power. Um, but we could we could we could keep building military infrastructure units for the purpose of just building better and cooler units. Oh, these things cost twenty cosmite, huh? Yeah, give me one of those. And then I guess we're not building any interesting units here because we're out of cosmite. Uh, so that being the case, how about some standard military infrastructure? Yeah, let's just let's just build up over here. 
So what do we want to research? I have no idea, actually. Happiness is not an immediate concern. We don't really have... We don't have a need for more Doctrine slots. We barely like the second Doctrine we're running. Uh, we could push for sector development, just get keep improving the sectors. Do we have a lot of sectors of a particular type? This is a fungal forest. This is also a forest, an arctic forest. And we have a lot of we have a lot of things that are forests. Is there a research for... Yeah, like, how about the one that's called forest exploitation? Units with amphibious or land movement gain expedited movement in forests. That's actually pretty good in our terrain. Okay, sure. Forest exploitation. We have a lot of those. Uh, this, this place can annex another sector. Unfortunately, we currently have no units to run around and do the annexation, so you're just gonna have to wait a minute. And... Oh joy, look at all the energy. We just have, we have so much energy. So much more than we need, it turns out. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I suppose we ought to have at those guys, provided that we can. Uh, Rebus Santoro is telling me I better prepare for war. I, I feel like we probably ought to uh, declare on him, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to assume... I actually don't know. Can we attack each other's units while neutral? Because in some 4X games you can. You can you can fight people's units outside of their territory while neutral and you have to go to war to try anything like conquest. <clears throat> Am I allowed to just attack? No, I do have to I do have to properly declare war. Okay, well let's do it. We do have this uh, this major Cassus Bella. He's he said a rude word to us once. That'll show him. I guess maybe I should have manualed that battle so that we can see the naval combat. Ah, whatever. I'm sure it won't be the last time we have the opportunity. Okay, the army has disembarked, and it looks like, uh, unlike some games, disembarking does not consume all of your movement. In theory, you could uh, you could hit hit land and immediately do stuff. So that's interesting. Do we want more happiness, even though we don't necessarily need it, just to cause happiness events more often? I feel like I probably want to um, want to just strengthen. Like I'm strengthening the the colony militias right now more than building new units. Maybe that's fine. I'm. I guess I'm making an assumption here that you don't have to pay full upkeep for colony defense units. And again, that's based on how other 4X games behave. Maybe not a safe assumption. But the thing is, we just don't have the Cosmite <laughs> to build a lot of units right now, but I do want to work on defense. Oh yeah, they, they distrust us after we declared war on them and then killed a bunch of their dudes. I mean, I gotta say, I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Uh, the growth would like us to kill some guys. They always want us to kill guys. Well, as long as they're telling us to do it, you know, nearby. In a way that's not inconvenient to me. What is this? It's an item crate. Uh, do I want to get back in the water? Probably, yeah. Alright, get back in the water. We found a crystal shotgun. The jolt of electricity emanating from this weapon jumps to two other targets within two hexes. And it does a fair amount of damage. That's pretty cool. Uh, definitely move it to the arsenal. I'm not not just selling it. Okay, no, em embarking did cost all of our movement. Disembarking, I guess, doesn't always, but embarking embarking costs everything. Well, that does complicate things slightly. I guess I'll get back over here. We'll attack. You know, when we can actually have both uh, both armies get involved. Because they have some kind of defense force plus four units on here. I'm assuming we're not in a position to fight them just yet. Not without everybody. So I guess what we could do here is we could just keep deploying stuff. Um, okay, tiles that we have vision of but not because we personally explored them are not valid targets for the thing. We'll just have our vision creep westward until we create, like, a band around the planet, if we have to, I guess. 
We will find the enemies, because it's a lot easier to kill them once you know where they are. If there's anything I've learned in my many, many years of, uh, of playing these kinds of games, it's that it's way easier to kill somebody and where they are. Okay, let's do this thing. Let's have Adam. This should be... Okay, it, t it says it's a safe battle. I apologize if, um, if you feel like I'm auto-combating too much, but I kind of like... To be perfectly honest, the combat's not like super interesting on a monthly it's it's slow is what it is and with these battles I, I just don't want to do the tedious ones over and over again okay so we did learn something important here safe battle does not mean none of your units will die and was that it was that all it takes to just make this mine no okay it is still you can absorb this colony into your empire but it takes time this colony will become a kirko colony okay so the colony itself has a has a type. It's not just a matter of whose empire it belongs to. Uh, yeah, let's absorb it. Right? Annex, yeah. Annex Amazagal is one of the things that uh, that will satisfy our, our objective here. And also, I want more land. You never have enough stuff. Alright, we have navally type units now to go with our new our new off uh, offshore settlement. I mean, it's on Asia. You know what I mean. It's not on the same landmass. Deploy Abyssian. Summons an Abyssian unit onto a target hex. It has a strong has strong biochemical abilities that can encase a target in a waxy cement. Well, that seems okay, I guess. And then, but yeah, we, we picked this up at the end of the last one, right? I think maybe we just keep pushing down the tech tree. Keep pushing for more and more advanced units. Target an owned colony when that when friendly armies fight in that colony's domain, spawn bonus frenzy to aid them during combat. I guess that's that's okay as a strategic operation. Twenty percent of their current HP. That also seems fine. I don't know, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of this stuff seems like overkill based on the difficulty that we've seen so far. Presumably, it's going to get harder. It might be the case that like the the um, campaign is just because it does function basically as an extended tu tutorial. It might be that it's just tuned to be very very easy. In fact, I am probably over preparing for a lot of the things that we're doing. Oh, still nothing interesting in terms of enemies. Ooh, Sandman catacombs. What did, I can't actually. If I can't see the hex well enough to be able to click and see what it is, why why does it show me that this should probably be linked to visibility of the building, don't you think? All right, five skill points on our big melee killer guy. I don't know. Uh, obviously, Overwatch is not super valuable. What does Parasitic Spray do? Strength 12 chance to apply Parasitic Infection. Doesn't tell us what parasitic infection does. We can go, I guess we can go look it up. I feel like you ought to be able to right click or I don't know. Anything like that where you're seeing the term in a mouse over and as such cannot mouse over it. Uh, it itself is a little inconvenient. Okay, it's morale down, biochemical resistance down. After combat, this unit may turn into a xenoplague if the one who infected it has the appropriate xenoplague technology unlocked. That's pretty cool. If we got that technology. Uh, it was you. Okay. So I gotta say, I'm not wild about that. This could actually be useful for him. The Fury of the Swarm. Because he'll be in there mixing it up with people, theoretically. I defeat two players by capturing their capitals or killing their commanders. I feel like... By the time you have defeated two players by doing this, you don't need doctrines and stuff anymore. I don't, I, I can't remember the last time in a 4X game where I eliminated two players through military conquest and there was any question at all about who was winning the game at that point. Hmm. I mean, do we want to just keep pushing? The whole point of this expedition was to do this thing. But now we're at war, we probably do want to just like finish it, if we can. 
You unfortunately don't have a ton of movement left, but it would be six versus three. That's got to be good enough. And I have two heroes, and they're tiny and weak. They don't even have chitinous exoskeletons, can you believe it? This seems irresponsible to go into combat that way. Alright, they do have a single army nearby. I think we should be okay. I'm going to back up a little bit here, just in case. So, I'm wondering about this absorb action. Can they stop it by, like, simply moving an army into the city? Or, like, how, I'm wondering how much I have to defend here. Uh, Close Quarters Specialist and Fury of the Swarm both seem good. So I guess let's get them. There's actually a, a pretty melee-heavy army here. Although that guy does at least have a gun. Okay, so this is my Transcendent. What does he do? He probably just... Plays defense. I guess he could go capture a thing, except we can't capture this because we got we got problems. How do we? So we picked up the ability to make naval units. How do I do it though? Because they're not in the in the thing here. Uh, in a forex where you get to choose the locations of your cities within the regions, I would expect you'd have to like build coastally to do it, but. Obviously, in this game, it just goes in the center of the region. So, I guess this might be a thing that is in the Imperial Archives. Naval... Uh, let's see here. A lot of specific skills and researches. Uh, just decreases production times for naval units. Because it can't be the case that you can only produce naval units in naval regions, right? Because other if that was the case, then there would be times where it would be, it was impossible for you to capture a naval region. Because you probably will need naval units to do it. Yeah, I'm not really sure. We could just build a whole bunch of flying units and have them, have them go after these guys. They don't seem all that tough. Okay, hold on. We did... We did research. The Torrent Cast is a naval... Yeah, it is a ship. Is this a not having the right structures kind of thing, maybe? It doesn't seem like we have any buildings that we could build that are naval unit related. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's... Hold on. Just out of curiosity, does the... Does the unit's actual description tell us anything? Right, we've enabled the production of water units. He is a ship. He has all that water movement. Yeah, so maybe you have to construct... We don't actually get to build things on spaces on the map, right? It's not like we could have a unit go out and build a dock in a hex that is adjacent to the water. Positioning doesn't seem to work like that in this game. So how would you actually construct the things? Unfortunately, it's not, um... It's not super obvious. Oh, hey, look at that. I'm a warmonger. That is where this, this Transcendent came from. For a second, I thought I was building the Transcendent, but that's right. I was I was creating a larger and more expensive unit. Well, I guess we're just not, <laughs> not able to produce our naval units. I'll go figure it out after the video. Uh, this guy just goes and plays like a zone defense. We'll have him hang out between the two cities so he can run to whichever. I suppose he doesn't like... We don't have a strong need for him at the moment. I just want to have some ready so that if we do suddenly have a need for them, they are there. Let's have a let's have a whole army, ideally, of, of backup units. And never stop priming the deploy monitor. I do kind of feel like um, maybe there's a way to set that to infinite. Because you really... There's not a compelling reason not to prime it. When you use it, it, it seems like you should just do that every time. And anything like that, where there's a, a very simple action that's correct every time, I just I want it to be automated. Alright, well we found the ocean. Also, 
an Imperial Cosmite stash. I do have strong feelings about Cosmite. That'd be nice to have. Alright, check this guy out. All of our units are so gross to look at. Just, just incredibly gross. Alright, it seems like they've just sort of fled. This is not actually... This is not real territory, right? This is just a forward base. That's what the dotted outline indicates. Well, now it's my forward base. Their tiny, tiny colony militia should not be an issue. Actually, we did almost lose a flyer there. Okay, free ego rifle. Is this a rifle for shooting at people's egos, or does this fire ego? Yeah, maybe it's both. The only way to truly kill someone's ego is to hit it really hard with a harder ego, preferably sharpened. It does seem like we're going to be able to just, like, completely run these dudes over, though, huh? They're, they're hardly even fighting back. What's up, Mikhail? We can become close, com uh, close comrades. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, and then you didn't want to come to my defense when I was assaulted. But here, let's try. Let's try to develop some kind of relationship based on mutual trust and you not totally abandoning me the moment things get difficult. Do we want, like, what do we want here for the balance of units? The engulfer obviously is a ranged unit. We could probably use one or two more up close units just for holding the ground. You don't want to get, I think, uh, too deep into that with a, with a shooty army because we have seen there is danger in firing into melee. I would like to limit the amount that I accidentally murder my own guys. But a couple of frenzied with regen should be able to keep enemy units busy. And then we probably want some fly-in like an engulfer seems okay. I think an engulfer is certainly better than a uh, an unleashed. I do want some fast-moving fly-in units because we're up against a lot of dudes who like to throw magic spears and shoot lasers at us, sometimes at the same time. Not always great to be a melee unit. So I am thinking that after we, um, after we complete our... this little campaign. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this story. I don't think they're very long, I think they're only like three levels. Um... After we complete the story, we might just go to doing like free scenario games, a little bit more analogous to the way that we have played 4X type games in the past. Because I'm not wild about the, the, <laughs> the scenarios here. Okay, this is an advanced energy sector. It seems very good. And it unlocks a cryomedical facility, which can infuse units produced in this colony with a special cryogenic mixture that gives them increased fortitude. But they always have to wear a sweater. This is very uncomfortable. Yeah, I think you guys are good. I mean, to be perfectly honest, at the rate that we're tearing through enemies here, we are, I think, shortly going to be uh, marching off to war with that army. Okay, this is a low-risk battle. Not safe. Let's go ahead and do it manually. This will be a, a big, interesting one. Hopefully. A massive defense bypass. What does that? What does that do? I kind of wish that those those pop-ups had mouse over. Like if you mouse over one of them, it would pause the game and let you read what it actually does. That would be handy. We could probably run this a little bit faster. Okay, so they're gonna take up like defensive rampart positions, like they want to be able to successfully defend their town or something. Can you imagine this level of cowardice? Maybe I should have my forces enter from uh, further apart. Well, we can still do some uh, some level of flanking here. So you have a couple of enemies on Overwatch. Oh, that's nice. That it, it gives you a visual indication of when you will trigger an Overwatch shot. Uh, let's have the flyers kind of wing around the outside. 
I know that they're going to be able to shoot at us. What is the range of their rifle shot? Seven hexes? It's actually very uh, considerable. That's a hell of a lot of range. So, like, out to here. Obviously, I would love to knock it shot first here. What I'm saying is, in life, do endeavor not to be the Greedo in your relationships. We can move up and just take take decent cover. We do have some, unfortunately, some melee units that have to, have to figure out a way to approach this whole situation. And it is worth noting that the way they've grouped up, if we can get into battle vomit range, we'll be able to do some truly devastating vomiting. And really, what more could a person ask for? So we are not considered to have line of sight to them. Because we cannot peek around our cover. Ah, this is fine. I don't think they're going to approach, but there's absolutely no reason not to go on Overwatch, right? As far as I can tell. No, there's no penalty for being in Overwatch or anything. I'm not really sure what... There's just not enough hiding spots, unfortunately, for the number of units that we need to advance with. And I'm reluctant to, um... Yeah, let's have you get all the way over here. I'm reluctant to stay this far back, because obviously I'd like to be able to actually do some damage next turn. Oh yeah, also Swarm Shielding is a thing. I keep forgetting about Swarm Shield. Do these guys have grenades or anything like that? They do have the Arc Power Blast. Doesn't really... It doesn't look like an area attack. Okay, so it looks like we, it, we're we not in too much danger uh, by grouping up. I think I'm going to move to here. This gives me pretty good cover. They'd have to get out to like this line to get flanking on me there. And then we have got to get... We gotta get some frenzied close to them. Frenzied are actually pretty terrifying melee units if we could just get up on the enemy. Okay, and also, preferably, not get murdered by Overwatch fire. So these guys have that same seven hex range. One, two, three. Yeah, so if we run over to where is that guy? If we run over to here for cover from this direction, we're totally like a hundred percent shootable. But again, I'm really, I really don't want to leave myself so far away that I'm not able to get shots next turn. Not, I'm not able to attack on my own. I guess we'll just have to take the high, the half cover. I suspect that guy is in a lot of trouble. I'm gonna get as close to uh, as close to them as I can on this side without putting myself into Overwatch range. I would love it if I did not if I did not get shot for no reason here. My range is pretty significant as well. Yeah, we'll we'll be able to at least pull off some snapshots next turn. And then this guy is harder to hit with ranged attacks. He's got that heal. He really does just want to get up on people though. And then we have these, uh, we have our flying units. This is the first time we're testing units given to us by the growth. Hopefully they'll turn out to actually be really good. But this is going to be a rough turn for us, no matter what. Alright, so you got that stinger, you got corrosive spit. Nothing terribly new. Sort of the same stuff that our flying units have, just less of it. Okay. I guess we're good here. I mean, I put this guy in Overwatch, but I can't imagine he's going to get anything done. It is a little weird to me that it still asks you to confirm that you're done with units that have no action points left. Wow, that, uh, that attack has some considerable range, that sniper shot. I mean, it's a sniper shot. It makes sense, but it still feels like maybe too much. Alright, flying units are doing pretty much what they can. I think they're, they're serving a fine purpose over here by drawing the enemies forward and eating all of the enemy's action points.
Okay. They came out of their defenses a little bit. This is our this is our moment. This is our opportunity here. So we have a 75% chance with the with the Psy rifle. Really is not a huge amount of damage. It's, the hidden are not they're not great, if I'm being honest. Uh, we could stagger these guys, just run up on them, get a bunch of melee overwatch on top of our enemies and hope to make their lives really difficult. But what I really want to do here is focus, fire, and get some kills. They did put uh, Rebus Santoro front and center. I'm going to assume that killing him doesn't like immediately end the battle or anything, but still probably a good idea to kill the most dangerous enemy unit. That's using my Corrosive Spit. I'm not super likely to hit him, and it won't really do any meaningful damage. It will remove armor. He does have four armor. So we could we could move up, just give ourselves the best possible shot. And we, There's a reasonable chance we get two of his armor off. The Sting is not... No, the Sting is pretty good. It's just inconvenient to use. But maybe we should try to focus a little bit more on the smaller units, because we're more likely to kill them in a single turn. And the core problem with running over and attacking Rebus is that he, uh, he has a ton of health and he probably won't die. Let's see. We can... Uh, this isn't going to do anything at all. We do have a Thrax pistol, but unfortunately it does not do very much damage. And I'm... like. Part of me wants to just run my melee units out into the open and have at them, but it's we're not we're not going to get any kills, and then we're going to get killed. Oh, the ego rifle does some really good damage, though. Is he really that much better than the other units? Well, his yeah, his pulse sniper rifle is very silly. All right, let's try to kill him. Seeing the uh, the damage the ego rifle deals, I think we can actually get him. So if I have you run out into the open, you're just gonna die, almost certainly. We have a little bit of of shielding, but not enough health to make that safe. We have the hidden. Ah, uh, the hidden cannot. Why can I not shoot him? But is the, the he has an effect on him? I guess because he's got. Oh no, okay, the, the swirling mist is just the broken mind. Is it really? Oh, right. It's because if you don't have the right ability selected, it just pretends you can't hit people. Well, yeah, let's let's move up and snap a shot off, and then we're totally, we're totally going to be able to kill him with the bees. I probably did this wrong by not starting with the bees, but also I don't know that it would have... I don't know that it would have made a difference enough to mean that we didn't have to use all these units. But he's dead, so that's good for us. Takes that, that big sniper shot off the table. And I do think we just, we just fly up and stagger these dudes, put a melee overwatch on them. Okay, we got a critical hit too, that's cool. Yeah, on this on this side we are we are just rushing them a little bit. How much health do they have left? Fifteen. I suppose we could just try to kill him right now. Here, this won't quite kill him, but I'm pretty sure the Overwatch shot won't either. This at least gives us a chance of getting the Overwatch kill, and then unfortunately these guys don't have a ton of stuff left to do. Somehow this huge wall is only half cover. It doesn't really make a lot... Like, the wall is considerably taller than my unit is. You would think that that would be full. Hmm. What are we going to do with you? If I make this or this my attacks... Let's see. This is single action. It does 20 damage. With only five range. Is there a cooldown attached to this? There is not. It's just a big laser. We could get close enough to try to use this, but 
We're gonna have a pretty bad shot. For some reason from here I get I get a yellow hit chance, but from down here I get red. I'm assuming that uh, coming up close is a bad shot because my vision is partially obstructed by the, the the rise here, but I would think that that would not apply from back here. Like you could definitely see those guys. We just got to figure out who it is that we're we're attempting to kill with our last couple of moves. There you guys. You have two action points left. Are they they rooted? Yes, they got immobilized. Well, that's inconvenient. I think maybe the uh, the computer doesn't realize how unfair that feels to me. I'm sure they wouldn't have done it if they would have known that it was going to be uh, disappointing. Yeah, that, that just means we have like a really hard approach, right? We don't get to approach with as many units as we would like. They can't they can't make any attacks from any place that I actually want them to stand in. All right, let's let's go to here. If Tanatsutsu ends up drawing fire from this guy in that flanking angle, I think I'm okay with it. And if we were to hit here, it would be a big deal. Alright, I'll take that. That's not too bad. Yeah, I didn't want to step out any further and make it easy to, uh, to hit this guy from other angles. And I think I'm just gonna sprint at him. Like, we gotta, we gotta get these flanking forces into a position where they can actually do some harm, right? Who would have thought? It turns out, uh, being the person who has the gun gives you a tremendous advantage in, uh, in combat situations. Can this, can this flyer get close enough to hit people? Oh, he can. He will 100% just die if we do that, but he's almost certainly dead anyway. We may as well, like, run up and do some damage. And we can stagger these We can stagger these guys and steal some of their actions. I do really like that system. I like, the advantage of, uh, of melee attacks and explosive type attacks is that you get a, uh, you get to steal some of your opponent's action economy. Should we healing surge the flyer just to eat enemy, just to eat the time of our enemies? We also do have an embrace of darkness. We have four points of tactical operation here. 20 damage. Let's see, we almost, we almost got this guy low enough to kill him with it. I think I might just do a heal over here. We're missing a little bit of health. That, that chain healing bounce could be useful. And that still gives us two uses of Embrace of Darkness. We could also threaten... I mean, these guys are probably dead, right? I think I'm just going to do the heal. And I'm going to do it back here. I'm sorry, that's not even the right button. Select this guy. And then now that you're at full health, you just kind of charge forward madly. It seems not great. And it, like, it really sucks. He can't quite get into cover from anywhere except all the way back here, which is like hardly any movement at all. But right here, he's totally not in cover against any of these guys. If he could get to this space, we'd be cool, but unfortunately we cannot. Even here, he's not really in cover. Yeah, it really sucks. It really sucks that you can't move through friendly units, or... I guess this is the best we can do. Maybe right here. A little... Standing right here means we have to spend an extra point of movement next turn before we can actually attack anybody. And he's not as fast as I would like him to be. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, you know what? Actually, not that many enemies are going to have range on him here. Let's make sure that we are facing a sensible direction. These don't have to also be flank shots, right? Well, I guess I'm going into defense mode. I can't be flanked anyway. All right. 
They do have spells and stuff. That guy just run into my melee overwatch? Oh, it seemed like he did, but we sure didn't get an overwatch on him. Alright, they spent a great big sniper attack on a guy who had no health. We got mind controlled. Which I did not even realize was a thing that could happen. And they have a ton of healing. Also, none of their none of none of the things their units do actually end their turn. Like that guy ran forward, did a heal, and then did several action points worth of attacks as well, which sucks. This <laughs> this unit is just mind controlled. That's that's remarkable. It's a remarkable ability for them to have. And you just get grazes all the time. Doesn't seem to be like a mechanic or anything there. It's just like some sometimes you shoot and it does it doesn't work. The problem with most tactical combat systems is there's just not enough missing. I get it. I, I understand that complaint. Uh Well, we can definitely kill a couple of units. I'm not because there's no obvious panel for like what are my debuffs and their durations and stuff. It's super hard to know, is this guy, should I kill these guys? Are they coming back? Are they, like, mind-controlled for two turns, or... With us not having any idea what is actually wrong with them, I can't plan. Okay, we do know you guys aren't going to get to play the game. And we could do, like, single, powerful-ish shots... These guys are low enough on health that if we hit them once with something, we can just uh, kill them with that spell. Yeah, mind control is like insanely useful. What a what a what a very good ability. And of course, we didn't get them low enough because the attack grazed. Uh, we can. S bit at these guys, but it's not going to do any damage. And we're very reliant on our heroes. Our heroes are just so much more powerful than all of the, uh... All of the other units that the other... <laughs> the other units feel a little bit like they could just not be here and it would be okay. Except for this guy. This guy, this guy only has melee attacks and he moves slowly enough that he may as well just have no attacks at all. If we stagger enemies, they lose their overwatch. We don't really have a lot of ways of going about that, right? We can move him up and try the laser arm cannon. Yeah, like, I don't really want to be moving toward the frenzied, though. We move to here. I can't shoot in the direction of the enemies. So it's like, eat the overwatch shot and get to actually attack, or just go this way and end up fighting with the mind-controlled unit. Both of these are pretty terrible options. We're never going to be able to death gaze because they have a huge number of staggering ranged attacks. I guess we could shoot. So we could shoot at these these guys if we hit at least once. Okay, I was going to say, if we hit at least once, then we can uh, we can use our tactical operation to finish them off. But it wasn't even necessary. That's nice. But again, like it still doesn't make moving toward our, uh, our guys over here any better. We do have to deal with this dude, somehow. Yeah, I gotta say, their defensive position here was uh, very strong. So two shots at 30% that wouldn't kill even if we... Or three shots at 30% if that wouldn't kill even if we hit them all. Or move forward and get slightly more shots, but or slightly better shots, but only two of them. Feels like the Soldier Bee is maybe not going to be super useful. These guys didn't even have any armor. Maybe the move is try to wing the soldier bee around, like move out of range. Try to get around to a place where I can 
at least be shooting my armor reduction at um, like their hero, who actually has armor. Okay, we gotta move you so that we can move him through the space. And we do end up just moving toward the Frenzied, because like getting getting up these stairs I think is our best play. Hold on, if I just mouse over these guys... Okay, no, it does not... There's no indication of the time on... The time remaining on the mind control. Trying to mouse over that just gets me the information of the terrain behind it. Yeah, it's wild that this game has... Um, debuffs and stuff. But it doesn't It doesn't have a place where they are displayed on the unit that is debuffed. That's like... That's some... Very, very basic UI stuff. If they're, if they're presenting it in a different way, I don't see it, and it wasn't in the tutorial. Okay, well, I think I'm just going to run over here. We're going to have to be in the open, because being in cover puts me in melee range of... I guess, I guess we, can, we can stay over here. Do I have any chance? I have no chance at all of hitting you. I have a very, very small chance of shooting you, but for some reason shooting you from this space will cause an overwatch attack. Moving into the space didn't, but this this is bad. It does sort of look like that, yeah, like the, the line of sight of that attack does not make any sense. They're definitely shooting just through this wall. So I guess it's better not to go for it, because the, the pretty good odds are I would just miss, right? No sense in inviting the overwatch. Yeah, I guess just go into hyper armor defense mode. And then we can have this guy run over here. And this can be our big flanking angle. Uh, you know what? No, you're you're facing the right way. Yeah, it sure doesn't seem like this is going very well. And that hero is quite powerful. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like the... It seems to me like an ability that gives permanent mind control would be way too powerful, right? So my assumption is that these guys do not have permanent... have not been permanently mind controlled. It is probably the case... Oh, I can't white step up here. Well, we can we can move a little bit first, right? Because we know that the um, the step thing always leaves us with one action point left so that we can do a snapshot. So we'll just move over to like here. Uh, yes, like I, I don't imagine that those guys have been permanently mind controlled, but boy, it sure would be cool if I had any idea how long they were mind controlled for. I'm not 100% sure how being in cover is uh, works with your line of sight. In a lot of like XCOM and XCOM inspired games, standing right here, I'd be able to shoot that guy because your unit is assumed to be able to fire from the space adjacent to the to the cover. But I don't know if it works that way here, and I really don't want to end up not being able to take this shot. So I'm gonna go right here, uh, and that's and we're gonna hope that the the smoke cloud is going to take care of it for us. But well, they really do not have very much, <laughs> a very high maximum damage dealt. Right, these guys actually get to do stuff this turn. Uh, can we get close enough for a good vomit? No. We can move to here. I mean, we can move to here and at least vomit in a way that will hit somebody. That's something. Uh, one, two, three. No, we cannot. Never mind. Uh, well, make the run up to here. We'll definitely be shootable by, like, if, if this guy moves to here, he can just shoot straight down at us. And also, the, these don't provide cover the way I expect, so we'll probably be shootable from by a lot of guys. But we also can't just run out in the open. Yeah, I'm not... 
I'm not sure what the best approach is here. Their guns have long enough range that we don't really have a way of approaching safely. At all safely. I mean, obviously. Obviously, melee units should not be able to approach ranged units in perfect safety. But we can't even do kind of, like, there's no strategy to this, really. We just have to run forward, basically. I assume we could get faster units. I'm trying to think, like, who could we stack up enough damage on to have a reasonable chance of killing? Because we do still have the hero. We can get the hero to a place where we can do an awful lot of damage. Like, let's move to here. And we can, we can soften up the units on the ramp a little bit. This guy, this hero with his super 20, 20 plus damage sniper shot, is definitely a serious issue. But we're unlikely to be able to kill him this turn. These guys we could kill this turn. So what did that get them down to? 18. So we can blow them up with the spell. Which I think is what I want to do. And I know I'm going to get people in the comments all upset because I said there was no strategy to the thing. I'm, I'm not talking about the game as I'm not saying the game has no strategy and I'm talking about this this approach. I don't get to apply a lot of a, a lot of tactics on the way these guys move forward. Because like scrambling from cover to cover totally isn't working. We're just not we're not fast enough to really take advantage of that approach. Let's see, we could get up. I don't it doesn't really help us to move up. I think we just start working on him. It's gonna take a few turns of shooting. We could try the the low percentage shots on these guys. It's not too hard to kill these dudes over here. If we could actually hit the shot. But I really don't like coin flip to deal no damage. And the soldier bee the soldier bee can get forward far enough to fire once. Pretty bad, though. What we could do with him is move him up to, like, here. Have him start shooting at this guy. And the benefit of that is that they have relatively few guns on this side. So they have to, uh, they'd have to consider spending one of their people who could be shooting at our advancing heroes, shooting the bee instead. Uh, and if the bee, like, does a little bit more damage and then absorbs one more attack, I think he's, we've probably got an okay value out of him. And I think I'm just gonna... I have no idea what is what is up with these dudes. I think we're gonna just continue trying to ignore them. And maybe that's a really bad idea, but unfortunately we have no indication of how the mechanics work, so... We just have to hope that it's not. Where do I want to shadow jump to? Because I think that's the safest way to get out of the melee overwatch that we've been put in. Just like shadow jump over to here and then snapshot somebody... Probably this guy, because we're more likely to be able to kill this guy soon. Okay. That's what I'm talking about with the coin flips. Like, it's, it's just very easy for the attack to do literally nothing. Well, we run forward into half cover and just get ready. Get ready, because now our, now our melee heroes are getting all up in their range and we're about to be able to actually do stuff. Right now, we're facing a direction that allows us to be flank shot by everybody. I'm wondering if it makes sense to... I'm assuming a flank shot is the uh, a shot that comes in from the three rear hexes, while the, the hex that you're facing and the two hexes adjacent to it are not flanks, which means we could face this direction and maybe not get flanked by that guy or these guys because the those attacks are coming in just from our left front not actually sure I mean again we're sort of flooding the range with targets which is it's a strategy <laughs> you can't argue that it's not something I'm going to move up here and just 
really give it to these guys. Yeah, shoot. If that hidden attack had hit, they'd be dead right now. Alright, we have one more... One more damage operation. I mean, I think I might just go for this. We can move forward a little bit and then do it. Right, all we have to do is hit for... What, what do they have left? Hit for 8. This attack does 11. So on a Graze, it's not lethal, right? I think it looks like Graze is half damage. I don't really want to move to here because that opens us up to attack from this angle. I think I just try it like this. Okay. Cool. So our melee units are about to be all up in their range. It's like this has not gone super well, and I, I think I'm almost certainly underperforming the auto resolve. But this is we're about to get to the part where we actually start doing damage. Boy, they're really able to just stack up a huge number of attacks. It is a little counterintuitive that um, ranged units perform better against melee attackers in close range than they do it at long range because of the fact that in, at, in a range where they don't have to move before attacking, they get, they get so many extra shots. Well, these guys have given us a flank. For some reason, our shot against them from here would be yellow. We have a good shot against these dudes. But a bad shot against these guys. Despite the fact that we're flanking them and... Not 100% clear on why that is. Is, it, there, is there a minimum range on this attack? Okay, that doesn't help. Is it because we're firing? I mean, we're not we're not firing through an obscured tile. We're firing out of an obscured tile. I, I guess that must be what it is, but that makes that um, that sure does make the the cloud part of this teleport and leave a cloud behind you thing uh, actually very bad for us. Which is a weird. That must not be what's causing it. It must just be hard to hit this unit. Does he have some kind of? No, nothing, nothing on him that obviously gives him a bunch of extra evasion or anything. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Alright, definitely just run up here and give him the claws. I'm gonna start putting pressure on these dudes. It feels like I want to just hit their hero for everything, he's, everything we're worth, because he is doing a very silly amount of damage. We can get three attacks here, we take the three attacks. And then that is enough damage to allow us to probably kill him with this. Yeah. And that means we still have our last operations point. We can do 20 to something. Our hero is unfortunately a little out of range now. We can get a pretty good shot off on these guys. They have this shield effect on them. Not 100% sure what this is. Their Cerebral Override. Hmm. Okay, we finally got our Frenzy back. It's uh, definitely too late. So what was that? Was that a three-turn Mind Control? That's an incredibly powerful ability. Uh, I believe if we run up on them... Hold on, let me make sure I understand how melee overwatch works. If we run up on them and leave no, um, have no action points left, we don't go on overwatch, right? Uh, units with melee attacks will enter melee overwatch at the end of their turn. Okay, I guess not. I thought when they were completely out of action points, they didn't have melee overwatch. We definitely moved a melee unit up on somebody earlier in this battle, and they didn't get overwatch, and I thought that was why. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally do this. I'm just going to run all the way out in the open here. We have no cover at all, but I would so much rather the Frenzied get shot at than my heroes. And yeah, there's just no, there's no position where anybody has a better shot on this guy than 55% for some reason. He's just super hard to hit. 
Alright, I am absolutely willing to just spend the last Embrace of Darkness. Let's be done with this. Sorry, what was that? He just... He just didn't get hit and instead teleported away? <laughs> okay. Well... I don't know what that unit's deal is. It seems like a very good unit. Please actually die. Yeah, this is part of this is my unfamiliarity with the units and their capabilities. We'll get there eventually. Okay, yeah, so we did not enter melee overwatch. That's what I thought. The Imperial Archive entry is just uh, either either I read it too quickly and didn't see the words, or it's just a little incomplete. Let's see, we have. I'm just gonna take this this nice clean shot right here. These guys are a little closer. They they could probably get some kind of angle on somebody else. We can get a not great shot on that dude. I mean, we don't have to have a great shot on that dude, right? He just. He does not have a lot of health left. I'll take it. Yeah, proper proper rifle units. Like our, our range unit is kind of kind of snipery and crummy, uh, obviously intentionally, because our whole our whole forces thing is that we are a little more melee focused. These proper rifleman type units are very scary. Well, we got there, but I did not do a great job of it. My uh, my approach through the cover did not work out the way I was hoping it would. Uh, in significant part due to me playing a little bit like it's XCOM, where you can vault over cover instead of having to walk around it after you're done hiding behind it. Uh, but I'll get there. Unhand me, insects. You lot were bred to obey. Die, vile creature. May your death bring peace to future Kirko generations. Swarm Herald paused to ignore. Thank Ro, Ro Quirzy for the rescue. Wait, sorry. I don't understand what you're saying to me there. I, I guess this is like, thank God. Thank God you rescued us. For a second there, I thought he was telling me to thank somebody else for the rescue, and I was like, no, I did all the work. You can thank me. Like the hero of old, your name and deeds will be passed along in the dreams of the Kirko Shizlaks. It would be a great joy for me and my followers to join your colony. Will you accept this humble request? I will say I kind of feel like there's too much alien nonsense in the Kirko dialogue. I get that you're trying to communicate the idea that these dudes are alien, but you translated most of their words into, you know, a contemporarily understandable English. You could just go the rest of the distance. We gladly welcome the Kirko Shizlax into our into our swarm. There is always place within our castes for those who had to suffer at the hands of the sack bleeders. That is such a gross. This see and and they trans they translated whatever it is in the Kirko clicky language that means sack bleeders. This is maybe a word they could have left in Alien. All right, we did it. We uh, we've freed the Kirko from the Syndicate prisons. We've murdered the hell out of the Syndicate dudes. Uh, so we've removed that faction from the map now, right? That's why that snap completed instead of waiting the full eight turns. So hey, look at that. We did get some things done this episode. Clumsily. Some might... You might even go so far as to say stupidly, and I couldn't necessarily disagree with you if you did. But we got there is the important part. Uh, you know, giving him access to Shrouded Step might not be a terrible idea. Yeah, I like that. And then we'll grab something easy... If he forms up, like, a gun line with people, I suppose this could be useful. I don't know how often that's going to happen. Also, we have other characters who could definitely use some upgrades. I don't know, some health might be okay. <laughs> Just thinking you know, a little bit of ability to survive being shot at seems good. Melee Overwatch can no longer be cancelled by Stagger and will never miss. Never miss is nice. I don't know what the mischance actually is on Melee Overwatch, and I'm sure it's it's not a simple thing, right? There's a, there's a whole attack formula for each situation. But if it's reliable, then you can actually plan around it. That does seem actually pretty nice to have. Okay, so now what? 
Do we actually have real hostels over here? I suppose one thing that we could do is... Where are my operations? We could run the native threat locator from here. Okay, so there are... There, are, there is a spawner in the area. Maybe we go clear that spawner, and then we could probably leave these things to their own devices. We could generate their own uh, defense forces and stuff. Also, apparently we are... Yeah, we're totally able to annex another sector. Well, they didn't actually... They didn't actually properly annex this. Let's make it this. I didn't even read what this does, but it has it has an icon. You know how I love icons. Uh, it provides 20 science, extra science per person, working science, and it unlocks the learning center. All non-mindless units produced by this colony gain plus 25% experience from all sources. That seems fine. Not like super exciting, but it's, it is just free stuff. Uh, and we have freed this guy. He's got one of them soul splitters and some psi stones. I feel like our dudes are just like totally wild about psi stones. And let's get you some heightened vision and also a mark. I guess we also have to be, um, yes, thank you. We merged up. We also have to be wary of threats from this side. Oh, and I forgot, we have a quest to accomplish over here. Maybe we should... Maybe we should hold off on killing the spawner. Maybe that's not the most important thing at the moment. Alright, I don't know how effective our force over here is going to be, but it sure is large and gross. What more could you really ask for? Alright, so we've taken over a syndicate settlement, and we can now produce these syndicate units. It looks like their actual buildings are not any different from mine. We can build some of these rifley dudes. I kind of want to do that. So hold on, what was that what was that dude who was like absolutely terrifying and refused to die? Was it was it a runner? Uh let me yeah, let me look at this. They have anti-gravity boots. They have an escape module. When this unit's health drops below zero, they automatically teleport to a random position three X's away and heal for 15. Yep, that's pretty nuts. Uh, they have a kind of a crummy pistol, but it does do it does do bonus flanking damage. That's neat. They have those arc bolas, which are powerful. Yeah, these guys seem all right. Maybe we should get some of these dudes. But then there's definitely something we said for just, like, the, the guy with the rifle. The guy with the rifle seems like a good unit. It is only 9 damage, I suppose. It's got good range, though. And then Arc Power Blast is is neat, and it has a... You can knock people out of cover with it, which is pretty cool. Now let's make some Syndicate units. Let's let's build some some weird stuff. Also, I'm sitting here at maximum influence because I'm not even paying attention to it. I probably ought to care about that a little bit more. Do we need more flanking units? I guess all my flanking units died because I did not flank very well with them. So I guess let's let's build some more flankers. That's probably a good idea. And also, also a gunman. Yeah, a flanking unit that doesn't immediately die when the, when the enemy turns their guns on it because it can teleport away and heal for free seems pretty cool. Like that's a that's a really neat capability for a unit to have. All right, let's talk about spending some of this noise. Let's let's go and have a chat with our friends, the growth. Dear the growth, could I please? Uh, yeah, purchase. I would love to purchase a thing from you. So we could get some weird units. I, like, I'm inclined to take some Tier 3 stuff, right? We don't really need... This is a Doctrine operation. We have a we have a Doctrine that I'm not, like, super wild about, but... I think I want to take a Tier 3 Elite unit. It has Allergenic Spray and Noxious Pollen, and basically it's just going to hose the enemies down with unpleasantness. That seems pretty okay to me. Unfortunately... 
I wonder if there's like an, an airlift system or something, if there's an easy way to move units from city to city, because I'm currently thinking it's going to be really hard to take advantage of these guys in our uh, in our main armies, with them starting way over here. We're going to buy two of them. So we're building a relationship. They have a movement type that I am not familiar with. 24... Uh, some kind of... Is that water walking move? What is that? This just has the normal land move symbol. Okay. It is it is an amphibious move. That's pretty cool. That seems useful. Noxious pollen. Poisons people. Okay. They have arc resistance and stagger resistance, but a thermal weakness. Do not get flamethrowered. Also, they are a large target. Cannot take cover, but provides cover. Okay. Oh, hey, we could use these guys to uh, fight this stuff. Maybe that's what we have them do. Do we have... We, we could just pull, like, the floating unit as well. Floating unit plus these two guys against the water monsters. It feels like we should probably at least try to outnumber them. Their army power is 420. Ours is 440 with just these two guys. Maybe we, maybe we can just take them. Uh, okay, so you don't fly, you don't fly. Yeah, I guess it would just be this dude. Okay, I don't know if this is a good idea, but my army power is higher than theirs. And we're building a flying unit right now, aren't we? Yeah, engulfers are flying, so okay, we'll uh... We'll try to take these dudes down that way and then claim our fish elevator. I know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I closed the last episode by saying we'd get this fish elevator. And I do feel strongly about it. That's probably where they build the fish tubes, right? Uh, but that, unfortunately, is going to have to wait for tomorrow. Because I very slowly fought a high casualty battle over uh, a player capital. It seems like it's really easy to take capitals in this game. Because uh, default militia forces are terrible. But... Probably if you build enough of those infrastructure buildings, it gets it gets fairly difficult to beat the uh, the militia army. I don't know. We'll play around with it a little bit more tomorrow. So come back next time for that, and we'll see you then.